Geometry Nodes has finally been released and with it I am sharing this initial product from me. So this is a toolkit containing a number of things, especially related to using camera culling and LOD systems within Blender using Geometry Nodes. Super easy to set up with these few nodes and if you're doing things like foliage or uh, environmental stuff or crowds, stuff like that, it can be really useful to use LODs and camera culling because you're going to save yourself a lot of processing. So with that said, how do we actually set this up? Let me just show you a really quick setup here. I'm going to go shift A at a plane. This is going to be our instancing object. Control A, apply the scale now that we've just increased the size. I'm just going to use, uh, I'm going to use a few Suzanne's here. Move these to a new collection called LODs and we can just hide that. Great, let's jump back into our plane, hit new on our geometry nodes here. This is added the geometry nodes modifier. Add a point distribute node here. It's all about points. And let's also throw in a point instance and select LED zero as our high res model. A little bit bigger at the moment. So I'm also just gonna grab these, scale them down. And there we go, a little bit more space. I'm gonna change to pass on disk so that we have a bit of uh, control over the clipping distance and increase the density geometry join geometry let's bring our plane back we add a camera Control alt zero just to make that the view all of this space around the sides we don't need to be calculating objects there it's going to make our scene really slow so let's throw in some of our new nodes hit f4 and link navigate to where you saved the toolkit file open it up and we're going to go into the node tree and we're going to link the Arendelle Toolkit version 0.1 through it on there. Now what we have is access in the group category for these nodes. We're only interested in one set of capitals, this lowercase camera mask. This is just a sort of subsidiary of the camera culling node. Let's grab the camera curl and we're going to throw this on here. Everything disappears, but we can select our camera. And by default, with the default blender settings of a 50 millimeter lens and 1920 by 1080, this is set up correctly. You can see as we move around, it follows as intended. So there we go. That's pretty cool already, but we can make it better. Something to be aware of, if you're using focal length of millimeters, we're going to want to change this to degrees with field of view. Right click on here, copy as new driver. And on our camera field of view, let's right click, paste driver. Go back to our camera. And if you want to change it back to millimeters, you now can. But as you can see on the 3D viewport, changing the focal length now changes the culling region. Sweet, we can do the same thing with these resolution settings. So I'm just going to paste drivers in here like so. And you can see what that does there. So that's useful. Quite likely that you'll probably just have one camera with one focal length and your render output will be a specific size. So this is optional setting up the drivers. Next thing I want to do is set up the LODs though. So let's add the group Arendelle LOD, throw this on here. And I'm going to also select the camera object again. We need to know how far away from the camera we are. We only have a few LODs, so let's add our extra point instances. So Shift D and this LOD one, Shift D, LOD two. And I'm just gonna plug these through. And this is quite important. If you don't have four levels of LOD, if you only have, for example, two in this case, the two additional ones, then you're gonna to need to make sure that your final one, your lowest resolution one goes into LOD four. I know it's slightly unintuitive, but essentially LOD four is the one that goes to the horizon. Whereas if you use LOD two or three, then it's going to clip at the point that the next one starts. You could always increase the range of that next one, but it's much easier just to throw it into LOD four. So because we don't have a three or a two, I'm just going to throw back these three and four down to a range of zero. And that's basically going to bring those clipping distances right down. And then we can just control our clipping distances on these other ones like so. So you can see we're changing from that LOD one to two when I use this LOD two distance. And equally with LOD one, if I just bring the camera in a little bit closer, you can see that we have that distance on here. Something that you might wanna do is have random rotation, scale and things like this on your instances. But it's important that when you're moving around, you don't have different translation on different LODs. So we have an LOD translation node at the LOD rot scale throw this on here. I'm just going to drop that straight on LOD 1 through to LOD 1 and I'm just going to take LOD 4 through to LOD 4. 
So now what we have is random rotation and scale. How this works is we have our target rotation and then we have the randomness on each side of it. So a rotation of zero is like our central rotation. And then I'm just rotating pi radians, 180 degrees in the z-axis. So this is 180 degrees positive and 180 degrees negative. This is a bipolar transform. Equally with the scale with the randomness set to 0.1, this just means that we have a range of 0.9 to 1.1. Something that's worth noting is that as we move the camera forwards and these get replaced, they get replaced with the same transforms on the other LODs. What happens if you have reflection in your scene and you want to make sure that you don't see any of this dead space that you are now culling on each side? Well, we have the out points from our camera cull. These are the ones which are outside the view. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add a geometry, join geometry. We're going to join our out points to our lowest resolution LOD and this is just going to bring it in. You'll notice that we have some in the foreground so you want to change your padding uh, as well as your extend to camera if you're on a low angle like this. So on a high angle you may get away with it just with padding however on a low angle because often you'll find that the camera is actually not looking at the plane that is generating the points you may also wish to turn on extend to camera and the way that this works if I turn up the density here it unclips the y-axis. With the extended camera turned off, you only use the region that the camera sees. So there we go. This is how we can set up a nice and easy LOD camera culling system with this new toolkit. We have a couple of other options in here as well. We've also got a mix float. This basically works like a mix node, allows you to have a linear interpolation between value A and value B, but this is a float value, so nice and performant if you just want to switch between numbers. Uh, we also have the rot scale randomizer this is the same as the lod rot scale but this just works on a single geometry input so if you are only doing one thing and you just want to have that bipolar transform on your rotational scale this node will let you do that and the last one that we have is the attribute vector rotate this is just a vector rotate node allows you to rotate attributes though so you could just use it on position but you can also output to other attributes and we have a control for the rotation center so super useful and you can flip this if you want it to go clockwise or counterclockwise you can do that this will be removed when we get a native attribute vector rotate but for now this is how we do it so this is how we can do our camera culling setup nice and easy hopefully this was useful the product is available if you buy it through gumroad or blender market you will have lifetime upgrades for free that's something to be aware of. I will be maintaining and upgrading this product as time goes on. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.